problem that I put it on the board as well. This is just another standard proton NMR. We're given this molecular formula and this proton NMR data, and again, we have to try to figure out the structural formula. I know that they have to be attached to a carbon that has no hydrogens, but I don't know how to get that. There's only two peaks. Did you work out the degrees of unsaturation? Yeah, how many degrees of unsaturation are there? Zero. Good. That's right. So if we work out the degrees of unsaturation, that's 2 times 3 plus 2 minus 5 minus 3 over 2, 6, 8. That's zero. What does that tell us? zero for both of these. That's good. From the fact that they're both singlets. Very good. So let's try to work out these fragments. So here we have a carbon. 
Now, it looks like you were guessing that this meant two hydrogens on the same carbon, because there's two hydrogens yeah. here. Now, that's possible. It's also possible that there could be two carbons with one hydrogen each. It could also be two carbons with one hydrogen each. However, that doesn't seem all that likely because there's only three carbons to start with. There's only three carbons to start with, so it's going to be really hard to get the molecule to work if we start multiplying the number of carbons. So it looks like, there's, like, you, like you were guessing, there should be two hydrogens on a single carbon. Now, we want to ask, can we figure out anything else that might be attached to this carbon? Do we have any clues about what else might be attached to this carbon besides the two hydrogens? Because we're in this 4.02 region, which seems to indicate that there's an electronegative element here. Well, what would the electronegative element be? Chlorine. Okay. So over here, I'm going to write chlorine. And I think that's something you might have left out of your picture. So that's the next step that you're well, going to have. I, I had them over here because I didn't know where to. I like to go through and start fragments with my carbons. And then oh, okay. I just had them over. This is what I had left over. This is what I needed to find spots for. Okay. Well, in any case, that, that's a good thought process, but then the next step that you hadn't taken yet was actually putting the chlorine on this fragment. That's the next step to make progress on NMR. We want to try to figure out as much as we can about each fragment. Right. For example, here we decided this carbon has two hydrogens, so the question we need to ask ourselves is what else is it attached to? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems pretty clear it's attached to a chlorine. And now we have to continue asking yourself, it must be attached to one more thing. Well, in fact, we know for sure what the fourth atom is that this carbon is attached to. What is the fourth atom that this carbon is attached to? Another carbon. That's right. It can't be anything else. It can't be a hydrogen, because then that would, that, this would just be that end of the molecule. It couldn't be attached to anything else. And uh, it can't be a chlorine, because again, this would be just a fragment. This has to be another carbon, so it can be attached to the rest of the molecule. So again, this is the next step that we have to t start taking when we're building up these fragments, actually writing what are the other parts of the fragment. So I'll put this carbon in here. And now we can do even better than that. Can we decide what this carbon's attached to? Let's see if we can decide what this carbon is going to be attached to. Well, what are the, what are the choices? It could be attached to carbons, hydrogens, or chlorines. This carbon here could be attached to carbons, hydrogens, or chlorines. Chlorines. How do you know it's not attached to any hydrogens? Because N was zero. We know it's not attached to any hydrogens. Uh, let's see here. Um, and uh, so, what can I put in these three bonds? Um, you can put two chlorines and a methyl group. Right. Or, to just take it one step at a time, you can put two chlorines and a carbon. There's really no other choices. Um, there's really no other choices because if we're not putting any hydrogens in, the only other choices are to use the carbons and the chlorines. Okay. And uh, we can't put three chlorines here because we only have two chlorines left out of the whole bunch. So these are the only possibilities for what can be here. All right, so now we're making good progress. And now we know for sure, like you said, this is a methyl group because we've used up all the other atoms. We've already, now we've accounted for all three chlorines. We've accounted for all three chlorines, so the only thing this could possibly be is a methyl group. Now again, notice how actually, in this case, we were actually able to figure out the whole structure without even looking at this fragment over here. We can now use this fragment for confirmation, but that n equals zero information here is so powerful that it actually allowed us to figure out the whole thing here. So that's the next step that we have to start getting when you're working through these on your own. What you had done on your own was good, but it was only a start. What you had gotten was this much. Well, you were right, this is attached to two hydrogens. But then you have to ask yourself, what else is this attached to? And you have to have to write down the other things it's attached to. And then what you'll see is once you've written down one thing it's attached to, you might be able to build on that. You might be able to figure out a lot more than you think. So everything we figure out, we want to keep building into the fragments. So that's not an easy process, but that's the process that's necessary for solving these problems. And now we can confirm whether that makes sense over here. We were saying that this was group A. So hopefully this is going to be group B. We're hoping that these hydrogens will match up with the characteristics for group B. Well, these would give us a singlet, because again, they're not adjacent to any hydrogens. Uh, there's a group of three here. And their absorption here is in the 2.2 region, which is the region that we say for when a hydrogen is on a carbon that's attached to a carbon with an electronegative element. Well, that's exactly what we have here. This carbon B does not have any electronegative elements, but it's attached to a carbon with electronegative elements. So this is the exact region we would expect this to absorb in. So that confirms what we'd already proved just from looking at this absorption, that this is the right 
spectrum. I'll check that in the answers, but that looks right. Where was our problem? There we go. So that was one, two, two, two trichloropropane. One, one, two, two trichloropropane. That's right. Okay. All right. Uh, hopefully, you're going to go back and redo these actual questions that we did here. And what you want to be doing is, again, trying to replicate this thought process. Well, again, uh, it looks like we should try another problem. And when we do, the technique that we want to start using is not just figuring out the carb the how many hydrogens are on the fragment, but then trying to figure out what's adjacent to that as well. And you just want to write down as much as you can about that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, thanks.